The Odd Turn, Tucker Carlson's most recent podcast with country musician John Rich, took during a conversation on his smash song, Revelation. As the two explore the sinister topic of the Mark of the Beast, what begins as a discussion about music rapidly descends into something far deeper. Because it states you cannot purchase or sell without the Mark of the Beast. You certainly could. One may substitute system for the word beast. According to Revelation, without the market, neither buying nor selling will be possible unless one bears the mark of the beast. As John reveals disturbing information connected to the prophecy, Tucker is clearly shocked, and both of us and him start to wonder what really underlie things. Not only is this not another tune, maybe a warning, Make sure you take one moment to subscribe so we may show the world how many people are on God's side before we delve into all the startling specifics of this interview. Let's now start right away. Almost like a lightning bolt, John Richard's song, Revelation, arrived suddenly. Just lounging at his Nashville house, he was not intending to write. He felt an irresistible force strike him. The melody and words erupted suddenly. Revelations. It seems to me as a black train running. One hour later, the song was finished. It was not only a creative flashpoint. Rich talks of it as a straight word from God. He moved without thinking. He grabbed his guitar, penned the song, then recorded it. He felt a clear make the song as strong as it could be and distribute the message. It was not about career decisions or tactics. It was about doing as he felt to be a divine directive. On his show, Tucker Carlton pushed him on the experience and questioned whether Rich's method of songwriting was usual. Rich remarked that although he had penned numerous songs before, nothing had really touched him quite like this. It was not his chosen activity. It opted. For Rich, this went beyond merely a song. It was about responding straight away when he sensed God calling to him. He allowed that fire blaze brilliantly instead of dampening it. As Christians, it reminds us to pay attention when that moment presents itself and to act without second thought. Rich's urgency is evident now with his strong, sweeping charts and his message reaching one of the largest venues on earth. Time is running out, hence the world has to hear this warning. Though he lacked a large record label or corporate support, Revelation shot to the top, vying with Eminem, whose most recent album features songs called Lucifer and Antichrist. The two assists differ quite dramatically. Rich's song is based in biblical prophecy, warning of an approaching reckoning, whereas Eminem's works explore dark subjects. Startled by the song's explosive popularity, Tucker questioned Rich about how he got the song out there without a major machine behind. Rich clarified that the people was the machine behind his song, and his record label was practically a P.O. box, Rich Records LLC. Although his publicist Jules made a few calls to a select group, generally it was up to the listeners to distribute the music if it connected with them. Indeed. In just 48 hours, Revelation evolved from a personal endeavor to one of the top songs in the nation, accompanying musical icons. Rich didn't create the song's message on his own. He more regards himself as a vessel. He just made them rhymed since the lyrics came right from the pages of the Bible, especially the book of Revelation. The songs tell of people cursing the name of Jesus and dancing in the fire. Rich noted how events like the Super Bowl halftime performance and the Grammy Awards have included overt displays of occult iconography, therefore presenting evil on full show for millions of people, referencing the proliferation of satanic symbolism in modern entertainment. Whether we know it or not, this is exactly what Jesus sees as the spiritual struggle we all live with. Wild how much media and social media influence everyone. It is abundantly evident how much continuous exposure affects maintaining current with social media for content generation may be somewhat taxing. It still bothers me the concept of content censors like those employed by Facebook dealing with all the darkest aspects of the Internet. 
Maintaining these platforms clean has a great human cost, and viewing so much upsetting material might cause long-term damage. One narrative about Facebook and its moderators started to take shape. Anyone can post on the platform, basically, but an actual human must check material and remove anything too graphic to stop general dissemination. Maintaining a specific level for agreed standards depends on this approach. If you enjoy our content and want to support us, click on the Super Thanks button below. Your Super Thanks is not just a donation. It is a blessing that supports our mission to share the transformative journey of Jesus. According to reports, some of the most graphic material ever uploaded is under examination by moderators. Hence, the effect of this exposure can be significant and long-lasting. For creators, social media is an essential tool. But it comes at the expense of continuously receiving knowledge, some of which is tough to dismiss, almost like walking a tightrope. So, write trying to stay relevant and educated while defending a personal peace of mind. The impact of the entertainment business goes beyond only culture. It advances particular concepts, symbols, and, as Rich understands it, a religion. From his perspective and the way the story is written, good versus evil is an underlying conflict that the entertainment business serves as one of the venues for. One can improve mental health and well-being by cutting social media intake. It can be difficult to balance, though, the urge to be informed and involved with lessening access to more sinister material. Many people find it challenging to walk this tightrope, particularly considering content creation. Promoting demonic images and messages helps the entertainment business represent deeper ideological conflicts and themes and symbols reflecting such clashes. Some contend that some ideas, including those connected with Satan worship, have an intentional drive towards particular beliefs or ideals. Programming has, over the years, changed ideas of what is acceptable or normal, therefore rewarding those who support particular agendas. On the other hand, artists who stress messages consistent with Christ and fight bad influences want to offer different points of view. Videos showing contentious events, such a rapper performing a lap dance for the evil, are among examples here. Furthermore included are fresh works by well-known musicians with titles straight referencing Lucifer and the Antichrist. Although the reasons underlying this abrupt rise are yet unknown, the consequences are rather important. In response to the change, just expressing anger or indignation might not be enough. Rather, appreciating and calling attention to these inspirations can show more results. The entertainment business seems to have undergone a major change over the past 10 years, as if performers were given permission to really embrace provocative subjects. High-profile events like the Grammy Awards, where performers freely displayed demonic symbols and participated in what would seem to be mock seances, clearly revealed this change. Often including these components into their artistic work, some of the most well-known artists in music perform these pieces live. This story challenges a theology based in darkness and deceit, therefore transcending simple creative expression. Children are exposed to this philosophy in schools, popular culture, and many media, which makes escape difficult. Then follows the mark of the beast and its applicability nowadays. Drawn from the book of Revelation in the New Testament, the idea of the mark of the beast frequently elicits passionate responses and interpretations, especially in modern debates. Historically considered as a show of total loyalty to a repressive government, it has become more important in the modern world, especially with the development of technology and monitoring. The growing representation of the mark of the beast in music and film represents a larger cultural interaction with good versus evil, faith, and morality. This trend brings ancient concepts into modern contexts, inviting audiences to consider their implications in a rapidly changing society. Art forms often mirror societal anxieties about control, power, and individual autonomy. Artists using such imagery may aim to provoke thought or critique existing societal norms, prompting listeners to confront uncomfortable truths about the world around them. 
This exploration can catalyze deeper conversations about belief and the influence of pop culture on spirituality. Regarding the prophecies in Revelation, including those surrounding the mark of the beast, many find these ideas abstract or fantastical, resembling elements of science fiction. Even those well-versed in religious teachings often grapple with interpreting these symbols. The historical context and the range of interpretations make it even more complex. What once seemed far-fetched, the universal tracking of individuals, has become a reality due to advancements in technology. Today, various systems monitor personal data, movements and financial transactions, sparking conversations about privacy, control, and the ethical implications of such surveillance. This reflects the essence of the mark of the beast, which signifies allegiance to a global power structure demanding compliance and control over personal freedoms. In this sense, the mark of the beast serves as a potent metaphor for the modern global system it represents, forces that seek to manipulate, control, and influence the populace. The mark is not merely a physical symbol, it embodies systems that dictate how individuals live, work, and interact. This reality underscores the tension between individual autonomy and collective control, emphasizing that many choices now carry broader societal implications. The concept of the beast refers to an entity or coalition of nations that will create a globalized system, often described in the context of a globalist agenda. The system is viewed as a stranglehold on the human population, capable of monitoring where individuals spend and earn their money. Recent discussions have pointed to the potential emergence of a central bank digital currency as an example of this control raising concerns about privacy and autonomy. Understanding the implications of revelation has become increasingly relevant. Many people are shocked to realize that the text explicitly states, one cannot buy or sell without the mark of the beast. The Apostle John made this proclamation centuries ago, yet it seems more pertinent than ever in today's technologically advanced world. Before the rise of modern technology, such ideas might have seemed far-fetched, but with current advancements, they no longer appear to be mere science fiction. All the elements necessary for the fulfillment of these prophecies exist now, while the exact timing remains uncertain, whether it's tomorrow in 100 years or a thousand years. This new era makes the passages and messages found in Revelation and Daniel resonate more deeply. It's no longer abstract. People encounter these themes daily as technology advances. A central question arises. Will individuals allow technology to strip away their autonomy, influencing what they could buy or sell? The conversation has broadened with the rise of AI and surveillance systems that track personal data. The mention of technologies like Neuralink adds another layer to the discussion as it raises questions about privacy and control. Elon Musk's contracts with the government regarding these technologies may not receive widespread attention, but they highlight the ongoing convergence of surveillance and personal autonomy. As these developments unfold, they align closely with the descriptions found in Scripture, particularly regarding the mark of the beast. The intersection of modern technology and biblical prophecies is both unsettling and intriguing. It underscores the belief that divine messages hold truth, affirming that the unfolding events confirm what many have long anticipated. In a world where technology rapidly evolves and influences daily life, maintaining faith becomes crucial. Faith serves as a guiding light amidst uncertainty, providing strength and clarity when faced with the complexities of modern challenges. It encourages individuals to seek deeper truths instilling hope in the face of overwhelming changes. In navigating issues like the mark of the beast and the societal pressures, faith fosters resilience, helping people stand firm in their beliefs while encouraging open discussion about morality and ethics. Ultimately, having faith empowers individuals to engage thoughtfully with the world, ensuring they remain anchored in their values even as the landscape shifts around them. If you made it all the way to this part in the video, you may qualify for our membership. So you might want to listen closely. 
It's an exclusive area where we've released videos that we cannot show to the public yet. You'll get to see everything first and learn about truths that we cannot reveal anywhere else. If you want to learn more, hit the link on the left of the screen or check out the link in the pinned comment. If you enjoy our content and want to support us, click on the Super Thanks button below. Your Super Thanks is not just a donation, it is a blessing that supports our mission to share the transformative journey of Jesus. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on my future videos. Thanks for watching, make sure to click the video on your screen.